My name is Gil Johnson, 23 years old, living in Ottawa. I was born in Toronto, raised in Hamilton. I am the eldest son of my mother. I am uh, one of seven children to my mother. Uh, my mother comes from the great twin islands of Trinidad and Tobago, and my father hails from Barbados. But I grew up in a single mother household, and so I've watched my mother as a black woman a struggle to raise seven uh, children on her own, each now with their own success attributed to my mother. Uh, she's a nurse and uh, her love for God, her love for us, and her instilling of discipline in our lives has helped to shape me to be the person that I am today. Uh, in terms of how I identify as a black person, I sort of find myself to be out of pocket. And I don't generally tend to behave or conduct myself in a manner that is considered uh, typical for black people my age. Uh, and I've found this both with non-black people and with black people. So I find myself to be out of pocket, but I am very proud of my roots and uh, who I am and how I am shaped as a black person living in a modern world. My experiences with discrimination uh, surprisingly have been very little due to the environments, uh, persons, and places in which I was raised. Uh, and so I don't really have many experiences with discrimination, but the few experiences that I do have allow me to relate considerably with the uh, discriminatory practices that others have endured. And I have made it my mission to ensure that equality and equity for all, regardless of your race, creed or color is essential and a central part of whatever we do. And now for my Canadian Black History moment, I will speak of none other than Mr. Lincoln Macaulay. Alexander, a lawyer, soldier, politician, minister, a civil rights activist. These words encapsulate the legend that is Mr. Lincoln Alexander. I'm gonna take you on a journey to discover the humble life of an extraordinary man who has left an indelible mark on Canada. One that you will understand has shaped this country in more ways than we can understand. Born January 21st, 1922, to a father from Jamaica and a mother from St. Vincent and the Grenadines in Toronto, Ontario, Lincoln Alexander, otherwise known as Link, had very humble beginnings. His father was a sleep-away car porter working for Canadian Pacific Railway, and his mother was a maid. They were immigrants to Canada, at a time where job opportunities for black Canadians were very limited. In 1939, Link wanted to enlist into the military, uh, but he was much too young. So he moved to Hamilton and worked at a factory as a machinist. It wasn't until 1942 where he was able to enlist into the Royal Canadian Air Force, but due to his poor eyesight, he was not eligible for combat. Instead, he served as a wireless operator and was honorably discharged with the rank of corporal. It was at this time that Link decided that he would pursue higher education. In 1949, he graduated with a Bachelor of Arts from McMaster University in Hamilton, followed by a law degree from the Osgood School of Law in Toronto. He worked for a few years at a small firm in Hamilton before starting his own firm. It was when he started this own firm that his interest into politics began. You see, he took a 23 nation tour of Africa, and it was this experience that allowed him to become conscious of his blackness, allowed him to feel pride over the talent and human ability of black people, and gave him inspiration to enter into Canadian politics. Now, 1968 was a pivotal year for the civil rights movement in the United States of America. It was in that same year that the prolific preacher, civil rights activist, and Nobel Peace Prize winner Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. 
was assassinated and caused riots in 125 different American cities. It was also in that same year, months later, that two black Olympus medalists would raise their fists in solidarity during the American national anthem at the Olympics to protest America's racial discrimination system. But in Canada, our history was made when Lincoln M. Alexander was the first ever elected black member of parliament. He would go on to serve 12 years as the member of parliament under the Progressive Conservative Party for Hamilton West. Now it's interesting to note, when Link was first elected in his maiden speech or his first speech to the house, he noted that he is not the person to speak for the Negro. He has not been given that responsibility. However, he wanted the record to show that he will take up the responsibility to speak for him and all other persons living in the great nation that is Canada who feel discriminated because of their race, creed, and color. This would not be the first time he would do firsts. In 1979, under the short-lived government of Joe Clark, Link served as the first ever person of color in a federal cabinet. He handled the portfolio of labor. In 1980, he resigned his seat and took up a call from Ontario Premier Bill Davis to serve as chair of the Ontario Workers' Compensation Board. After five years of serving in this position, history came knocking at Link's door again as he accepted the position to serve as Ontario's 24th Lieutenant Governor, being sworn in in 1985. During his term as Lieutenant Governor, which made him, by the way, the very first black person to ever serve in a vice regal position. Just thought you should know. During his mandate, he made it his priority to fight racism, promote multiculturalism, and to advocate for the needs and necessities of youth and seniors. After his time serving as Ontario's 24th Lieutenant Governor, he took up the position as Chancellor of the University of Guelph and served in unprecedented five terms to the point that at his retirement from the position, they made him Chancellor Emeritus. It is also noteworthy that he served as chair of the Canadian Race Relations Foundation, an organization dedicated to the elimination of racial discrimination in Canada. Sadly, on October 19, 2012, in his sleep, Lincoln M. Alexander passed away. He was known for his sound judgment, his compassion, and his humility. His legacy lives on in the schools and Hamiltonian highway that have been named after him. But further to that, his legacy lives on on January 21st, which is proclaimed in Ontario as Lincoln M. Alexander Day, a day where we are reminded of Lincoln's service and determination to fight for racial equity for all in this society without malice. This is the life of an extraordinary man who has made an indelible mark in a little country called Canada. If you want more information, simply click on the link below and you'll be able to learn more about this extraordinary man.